Hi, my name is Brad Lancaster, and I'm the author of uh, two books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands, Volume 1, and the creatively titled Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, Volume 2. The whole idea is to empower people to improve their local water resources through simple means. And uh, to kind of get an idea of what the contemporary situation is and a simple shift we can make, let's look at a muffin tin. So this is how most landscapes look. Whoops, this is how most landscapes look uh, in the Western United States. Um, we tend to plant trees and other vegetation on top of these burial mound-like hills. So what happens when it rains on a, a landscape like this? Well, let's grab the rain and rain on it. So here comes all the free water from the sky and it just runs right on off. And what happened down below? Well, that's where all the water went. And typically what you'd find is you'd be flooding downstream neighbors while dehydrating your site. So just an hour or so after the rain, you've got to turn on the irrigation system to replace those liquids you drained away. But there's all kinds of embodied energy into the water that you're getting from the tap because there's pumps trying to pressurize that water and moving it from many miles away. So, the shift we need to make is to flip the muffin tin so it's the correct side up. And this way, instead of um, planting on top of mounds as the old way, we're instead planting beside, or in some cases within, these sunken water harvesting earthworks. So now what happens when it rains? Well, starts raining, we start filling up these basins, these muffin tins. And then when they're filled, the water keeps going. But it's only the overflow that leaves the site, not all the flow of the site. Okay? And long after the rain has stopped falling from the sky, we've got all these basins, all these earthworks filled with water. And that water is now infiltrating the soil instead of running off and causing problems downstream. Now, the soil, unlike a muffin tin, is pervious. <laughs> so you're not going to have standing water for more than 12 hours. If you've got it mulched and vegetated, all this will infiltrate. So you won't create a problem for mosquitoes. You'll be part of the mosquito solution because you will be removing the opportunity for water to puddle for long periods of time. Instead, you'll store the water within the soil. And the vegetation, will be your living pump, which lets you access the water in the form of fruit, passively cooling shade. I'm glad I'm in the shade now. Uh, wind breaks, wildlife habitat, erosion control, and so forth. And uh, to take this concept further, uh, I want to show you another model. What I've got here is um, a two-scale model of a 4,400 4, square foot lot. And on top of that, about a thousand square foot home. So what happens on a landscape like this when it rains, okay? Well, same old story. Water just runs right on off. So uh, when people hear about water harvesting, this idea of capturing that free, high quality source of water that falls from the sky, they oftentimes think, I wanna get tanks. So let's get some tanks. All right. So again, to scale, I've got a 1,700 gallon tank to go under that downspout and another 1,700 gallon tank to go under that downspout. So let's see what happens now. All right, so we rain on it. We fill up the tanks. Woo, all right. But we did lose quite a bit of water from the runoff running off of the general landscape. Nonetheless, it's still an improvement because We've got 1,700 gallons here, another 1,700 gallons here. Okay, that water would have been lost, but we kept it on site, all right? But what about the water we did lose, the water that ran off the general landscape? That all too often is the forgotten zone, okay? People only think of roofs and tanks, but we can store a much greater volume of water within the soil of the landscape if we set it up to hold on to, absorb, and use that water. 
basically creating a sponge is what we need to do. A sponge of mulched and planted earthworks. So let's bring in those sponges. So, I just so happens I've got two sponges. But rather than being above ground, they would be more within the muffin tin basins. But this gets the general idea. So we will again rain on our little landscape. So here comes the rain. We'll rain enough to fill up the tanks. Whoa, we're already filled the tanks. That was quick. Okay, we lost a little bit of water to run off there, but nowhere near as much water as we lost before. So we're now part of the community's flood control system. Okay, because we're keeping the bulk of the rain on site rather than wastefully sending it off site where it'll cause problems for others downstream. So, I'm going to remove my house and replace it with a measuring cup. So, let's look at what we caught. Again, 1,700 gallons from that cistern, 1,700 gallons from this cistern, for a total of 3,400 gallons of water that would have been lost before, free from the sky, no water bill for this one. And look at how much water that is. Okay, now remember that amount. Let's now add to that the water from the sponge, the water that we caught in the landscape. Okay, and then this sponge. Look at that. Four to ten times as much water is what we caught in the cisterns. And what is the cost of creating a sponge? Basically the price of a shovel. It's just changing the topography of your landscape so you've got level bottomed bowl-like shapes that you then mulch with free organic matter. You plant it with vegetation creating the living pump and then the rain becomes your free passive irrigator of that landscape particularly if you're using indigenous or native vegetation already adapted to the local rainfall patterns and soil types. That's the easiest way. But you can also set it up to grow some exotic fruit trees so to get some different on-site food production too if you wish. But uh, the key thing here is cisterns or tanks are a great way to harvest the rain, particularly if you want to use that water to drink, bathe with, or wash, have readily at hand. But don't forget the earthworks. Don't forget the general landscape. That's where we want to create these earthworks, and that's where we can capture the bulk of the water, and then use the plants as the living pumps.